last week. Last week we saw some websites, carnival websites, two websites. Did we have a demo in? No, just the websites, right? We had a demo from Antoine for the widgets on the dashboard. Um, we didn't talk about anything. So today. Do we have demos? Me? Oh, Jean-Tierre, for the jump right. <laughs> and maybe I have a couple of demos. And a couple. And then I have a small one too. Oh boy. So I won't do anything. Want one about the multi-text field. Okay. The most topics. Not a tick. Topics. Um, I yeah, maybe we can talk about how yes code is broken. Didn't broke everything. And, and Zoltan helped him break everything. Let me see. Uh, I'm trying uh, to fix it. But it's hard with them having users, isn't it? Isn't it? It's uh, so much easier if we had no users. Um uh, not sure. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Just to say uh, that my demo is about a workflow, uh, workflow atomicity, okay. uh, for example, for workflow singleton. We'll see. Uh, Can you um, increase oh. the resolution, your screen resolution? <laughs> yeah, I will, I will zoom on everything. Thanks. This, and I will also zoom in the browser when I go there. So this one should be that or to the one or to the one since last week. Oh wait, I should send it quickly. So nothing new on the one. We didn't do any triage. Maybe there are some PR pending. So we'll see that in next week. Um, or should go. Dev branch today, so last week, 22nd. 20 seconds. Team revert content type patches. I haven't looked at it yet. Yes. Okay, so we'll take a look. I assume some of you have already used that changes. Asian Blob Storage 1.2, so updating the libraries. Uh, correctly generate CDN base URL for local scripts. Oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, interesting. So, interesting. Don't put it to the end of the path, include the protocol. Okay, fine, slash, slash. Okay. We talked about it. I think I commented on that. So try create absolute. It's not complete compared to that. And that's good because you look at it in the order of popularity or usage. So HTTPS is the most common one. So, okay, that's this one. We don't need to check the other ones. So that's good. Um, okay. Remove site name from login page. Okay. So he can do that. Was it after? No, that's when. How do you know? There were some comments on the issue. Workflows, badges. Fins, badges, workflows, such slides. So UI stuff, await in place of gate awaiter. Ah. Ah. Is there one that we can do in Zoom? Okay. Maybe I have to cancel things later. Interesting. Yeah, that would have been bad in this case. 
end, end, end. Yep, you can't return, but you're going to wait here. Okay. Uh, Cognion assets, update Cognion. Uh, interesting. So do we know if this, I think this one works in China. Do we know in, how do we count and test if it works in China? Or is it also because of that that it was fixed? No, I don't really know. And it's a mix between a GS deliver and GS and Cloud, Cloudflare. Okay. I think I should have noted that at some point we did a change to a specific one because it was working in China. Mm -hmm. And this one is not available on Cloudflare? It was not at uh, the time I met the PR. <clears throat> and um, Bootstrap uh, and the Get Started page is using G JS de Deliver. Okay. Uh, lots of red points in China. I have no idea what it means. So the apps have that's which work. And yeah, if you say it's the same for Bootstrap, then on the, set, on the setup screen, that should be fine because I don't think there is an issue with that on the setup screen. Oh, I see, you see here, not fair. I, there is two dots in China. No, is it China? Is it not China? This is China. I won't say for Taiwan, it's too political. Um, so, the weight now going up, jQuery or documentation, dump open edict, with this version. It's funny because a few months ago it was like, do you think much of the one we ship before the edict? I say maybe, maybe not. So, good, now we can ship. Uh, fixes8080, that's a bad name. Oh, oh. Careful with that, I'm breaking everyone. Contents and in this bulk action. Or fixing overrides. Uh, fixing for the placement because um, they weren't working in placement because they were badly named. Yeah, you already made it. Yeah, like this a few weeks ago. Yeah, for some, other, for some of the other shapes. Tenants buttons, some buttons for tenants, display buttons text. Localizations class. Yeah, we talked about it last week. What does the localizations class do? Uh, so you can specifically target uh, this button uh, okay. if you want. Okay. Buttons. I can show the links to key vault configuration because we merged key vault Azure feature. Okay. down, so this is KDOX, header buttons and my Oh, that's the header. Top. Okay. We have to test that 
looking at the code, I don't know what it does. Uh, wow, all these new contributors. Because it doesn't work in a single commit. That's okay. We got Flexbox. Okay, there are issues with this thing. Maybe related to the comment I made last week. On the side, I think. Remove a new services in the library. Okay. That's when we'll have an analyzer or some warnings that tell us that this is not used, this is not used. Well, the issue that it's using the constructor to be assigned, but create manage media options permission, okay. New media. View media options. Okay. I see. But I think that on one day. Time span max value for looking times. Time on not max value and time out. Because it, it, it was failing um, if we if you pass uh, a time span max value uh, because uh, for example the the semaphore slim uh, the underlying data is a, is an integer and the time span uh, the millisecond uh, total millisecond is a, is a double. So uh, I don't I don't remember what I did. Uh, I I check it in the code. Okay, blocks. Update JS key to manage cookies. Uh, and now it's back to current flare. <laughs> I'm confused. Oh, then you found that it was there, so you went back to Cloudflare. Bootstrap select driver and spider and the source. Okay, content event display driver. Content event display driver name. Okay. Content task display driver driver. We don't know, maybe it's a driver for a driver, but in this case, no, but it could be. Fix model semantics. What does AF mean? Anti forgery. Ooh. Everywhere. So that's important to note here because that's that's a breaking change. If you have modules from the admin, it's your not. modules are broken. It's not? No, I kept, I kept it for now and I, I warned people with the console warn. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it will be a, a breaking change event, really, if you're not changing this. Console warn. <clears throat> yeah, on the PR, uh, at first, uh, 
I want I wanted this to be a breaking change because forced people to change it, but afterward Dean told me just keep the old selector and warn people. I mean, for it developers that doesn't will... Okay, it doesn't hurt to keep it this way. There will be a one. Uh, at some point, we might change this one to an alert. <laughs> yeah. That can be dismissed forever, but at least it will be seen once, like with a cookie, something like that. Uh, like a big message somewhere. And then and then the next step will be let's remove it and break everyone. Well, at least if you're developing something or doing a PR, then you're going to have, to have a warning that you need to change this. So for every pay PRs that we have, then we can check this and track it. Can someone create an issue for that? Just to say that in a few months, we change this one to be an alert, and then after that, we'll do the breaking change to remove that. It doesn't hurt to keep, I can probably in case, but why keep it? That's important to remove it. Okay. Issue templates. Uh oh. Okay, so we talked about it. Feature request. The report. Mm -hmm. report, great. Report, great. Let's improve. Describe the bug. Okay, that's simple enough. Let's see how it goes. Portrait call dot cause. My thesis back. No, someone merged the PR. Someone merged the PR. I did, I think. So what was missing in the PR before it was merged? Six eight two. Missing something. I remember the UI was not consistent. So it must be using a distributed cache also, which is now valid. Let's see. Well, I can see the changes here, but here I have a better view. Oh, sorry, article country.
Ok, core policies, add policy, post, index post, manage consulting, ok. Add a new policy. Add or remove, I assume the remove is in the UI, and I assume this one is just overriding existing ones. Solution is coming from view. And then it's updating settings. I assume this is an acronym, everything in a package. In any text, cross origin request, real security or whatever the R is. This is wrong. You don't use interpolated strings in login. You use name properties like core policy name and you pass it as the first argument. Everyone in this meeting, I should use it. Okay, so this is the configuration file. Configure three settings and then applying them using the middleware. Where is middleware? Options. Why is just options? Cause options, cause options, okay. That's just options, okay. Cause service, so there was a discussion about the ISUT cache. I don't see anything here. Uh, is this? Because, uh, this setting are part of the seat, of the seat setting. Uh, it is uh, distributed uh, through okay. the setting. So is it the way we manage settings here? Is the name or is there? Oh, okay, that might be the case. Uh, yes, the, there is uh, other part, other setting uh, that work uh, like this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's a seat, seat setting section. It, it uses a seat setting section driver. Uh, do we have a resource for that? Yeah, we do. The, the source shouldn't be there. Okay. Just because of the CDN stuff and everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, careful there. That's wrong. You can't do that. Super bad. So the issue here is that we are using an HTML serializer to serialize JavaScript. It's not compatible. Well, that's not right. Okay, wait, one second, maybe I'm wrong. But so here, this is HTML in a script. And what we say is that we don't want to encode that. So it says row, JSON summary. So that might be good. Sorry, I didn't say anything. That's probably good because we are in a script and we are summarizing a JSON document. Yeah, th that is the whole script. It should come from a data attribute. So that's safe because serialize will um, serialize valid JSON. So 
that's good. I didn't say anything. I mean, you should say something because that that entire script there should be read from a data attribute. That whole um, script is just setting another script. It's values. Why do you say that attribute? Because it's passing um, serialized data. I think, no, I think it's good in this case because the serialized data is just. Well, serialized data is, is safe, yeah, but the, the script itself there, if you read it, um, is literally just setting the cause admin, a value in the cause admin script. So the value there should be put on a data attribute and the, the cause admin script should read it. I don't agree. Because if you pass it on a data attribute, then it will be HTML and Godin. So it's safe and then it will be read by it will work. I don't say it's okay, it it will work. But I don't see any issue with it's just, a, it's just an odd pattern to, to do it that way. Okay, yeah, we already did it that did way you? for HTML values and and that code in strings and everything. But in this case, we the so and it was done this way too. So there is some HTML serialization happening. S sanity check. Here, I think it's done with that thing. Because this thing will produce valid JSON. So you can't inject a script anywhere there because it will be serialized in JSON. Yeah, sorry, I'm probably not talking so much about the security aspects of it. It's okay. just a way to do it. Pattern? Okay. That I don't think we do that anymore. We put the, the dash outside and it will work with um, RTA. This edit me here. Where is the edit me here? I saw here. But it seems weird. Like maybe it's just a copy paste from something else. I don't see why edit me will be displayed somewhere. Same here in dash. Dash dash. This. It's just UI. Good. What is that? Okay. Any presentation? Oops. Oops. Um, quick, 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 quick. One more page. Get up, remove icon before. See documentation. Short code to short code. Okay. That's me. Um, doc recipe custom settings. Ooh. 
document recipe custom setting. Add placement feature, placement feature in recipes. Um, mm -hmm. Not sure. Maybe I don't know. It's kind of advanced feature for this recipe. I don't know. Is there anything else that is super advanced? That yeah, as long as it doesn't impact per, it's because it's just no JSON somewhere and nobody will understand what it does. So uh, as long as it doesn't hurt, but just don't pollute the. Or overload the UI for things that are not used. Nugget packages. Login via email or username. Wow. So it's done. Good job. Migrate any usernames replacing at with plus as usernames can no longer be an email address. <laughs> so everyone who has a, an email address as a username, be careful next time you log in. There shouldn't be many, just in adjustment. Well, it will still work because now it will find the email address, which does the. OK, OK, but be careful. If you think you're typing your username, nope, not typing, typing your email address. Uh, if you've used the email address also as the email address, who would use an email address and use a different one for their actual email address, right? That's our theory. OK, and we decided to change the defaults to allow, to disallow the at in the username, just to be sure they don't enter an email address. And so they can't spoof someone email address and because we validate that an email address is an email address so has an at symbol this way there can't be uh, collisions until you decide to change that and you take the responsibility We are breaking all the translations. So Antoine, you have to go over the 20 languages and find the translation for that. It's a pretty big swing in the user learning. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. And change. Refactor menu item views. Uh, we didn't talk much about that, so we trust child. And uh, note that it might not break you if you haven't customized it. If you have customized it, it might not break you either. If you have customized all these things, if you have just customized one of these, it's broken. So this is, this is interesting because I remember 
think three years ago, I found an issue in ESP.NET to be able to do things like this because you could not anymore in .NET Core. At that, with a custom thing here, we were blocked. We had to do some custom things. I don't remember what exactly. Flex summary admin. Update your application manager and support setting scope permissions. Okay. Did Kevin see that? I think so. I think this PR is fine. Yeah, I bet the PR has been around for a while and um, Kevin's been helping on it. Did he, hang on a sec, can you just pop that there for a sec? Did that, oh, it's in our test project. Took system dot link that I sent. What? Where? Sorry, the the Orchard Core test project. Yeah. Okay. What is that? Instancing. So I was just curious because I was talking about it with Kevin because I have a PR and to introduce it for the media library to use. To remember. Yeah. Um, so it's the link extensions for um, async and removal. Why do we need the package? Isn't it part of C sharp, whatever, or the net core, whatever? No, it's, it's managed and supported by the reactive team. Um, so it's not actually managed by Microsoft. Yeah, this thing, but the namespace is the namespace is common across the two projects, but it's okay. Graphical Camero. Boom. It's not the first time, still not the last time. Um, and I use a port for project templates. Magnus is here today. So I can't say bad thing. <laughs> no, maybe he wants to make a demo. Um, yeah, yeah, I can make a short demo if you want. I'm not sure I want to see that. Kidding. I'm sure we have time to see everything. Ah! <coughs> I can do mine uh, later if you want. Uh. Okay. Let's see what time we have. Um, I'm fine, but uh, it's about your time. It's later for the Europeans, which which we have more right now. Europe, States, Europe, everyone's in Europe, but a few of us here. Yeah. My only concern with that is how much work it will give us. Because you don't know Hisham, for instance. Hisham is listening, and when he sees that, he will be like, wow, there are so many files I want to add. Just looking. And you ca I can already see the hundreds of file templates that will be added just because we have five of them. We can't say, no, we don't want the 95 other ones. Why these five and not the 95 other ones? And then, and then good luck with maintaining all these 100 files. I'm exaggerating, but that's how I see it. And then, oh, let's do a change, or let's remove that, then we have to change all the files to that. That's, that's my only concern, the, the amount of work that we have to manage as part of the core solution. To see that. So I want to see it um, and to see how it goes. We can always remove it if it gives us too much work. It's just I'm, I'm being careful. Oh, that it can also break because, oh, we forgot to update all the templates with whatever 
stuff we need to update and then people try it and say and find bugs because it doesn't work so that's the uh, it's using exactly the same template as uh, the command line so there's there are, there are no okay. code changes uh, so, I can show. Yep. So we finish that. Ability to deploy shortcut templates. What is that? Oh, that's good. Okay. Mm, that export of uh, shortcut templates. Okay. Dean, why didn't you do that? I was probably trying to busy trying to fix shortcodes or something at the time. Busy oh, trying to rename awesome. it, no doubt. And is it good correctly named? Yes. Uh, widget summary. I mean, why would we need a widget summary? Uh, the same as the content uh, flex uh, summary and mean. Uh, okay. But for widgets. Okay. The content with such bonds. I see because in the view of the layers, we use that. Okay, good. Demos. So let me pick who does the demo. Um, Magnus doesn't do many more, so we go with Magnus first, and then JT, then Gene, then Anton. So Magnus, you can share your screen. Mm. Yes. The so so do, do you see it now? So it is uh, yeah, sure. in. Should I make it? Uh, yeah, maybe don't see it quite yet. No, wait. What happened? Share content button. Oh, I'm not sharing anymore, so I can't show you. Oh, wait, uh, I will uh, do it again. Mm -hmm. oh, so, do you see it now? Yeah. Yes, we can see. Thank you. Perfect. So, what uh, it does, it, it's coming now in uh, Visual Studio, so you can, uh, all .NET Core templates will be available in the GUI. So, you can use them from uh, the project uh, templates. So, I added... Uh, so, if I check the box on Visual Studio, and I have the project open or the the, the, the you get package referenced, this appears automatically? Yes. Or do I need to install the .NET install templates, something like that? Yeah, you have to install the templates from uh, that we have. But currently this, uh, in 16.8, you will have, I saw some uh, uh, on .NET, Toolbox, I think it's called, they showed this. So in 16.9, all .NET Core command line templates will be available in the GUI. So what this does is that it uh, adds, so uh, this is standard, and then when you go to the next one, okay. you can select uh, the same options as in the, with the command line. And your PR doesn't do that, this is... Yeah, it's uh, enabling it in the GUI, and it is the same parameters that are used in okay. uh, from the command line. So the template code is the same as when I you use, use it from the command line. Give it your PR. What did it do? I'm checking. It enables uh, these fields in the GUI here, so you so you can make these selections for framework, uh, logger, and you can also enter the version, the same same parameters that are available from the command line. I see, so your PR is just defining the metadata for Visual Studio to execute yes. the templates, the donate templates new. Yes, the same, the same template as, uh, so the one I show okay. you is the same as this, dot new so OC CMS. But I saw some liquid thing. Or do we already have? No, didn't I see create a liquid view or something like that? Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's in uh, this one. You have it in the, uh, it's in the theme. The module. I would say. It's already, and it was already there. 
Mm. Yeah, it's a, that's the option is already there. So in the scene, oh, you have this uh, at build files in views. And in uh, the module, there is an option to generate the code for a part. Okay. So you can do, do it. Uh, okay, I didn't understand the change. So the change so is just about. It's only enabling the GUI. Okay, good. There are no uh, changes to the, uh, to the generated uh, yeah, to the template code. Okay, good job. Thank you. I engage. So that's good. So it's not more complicated, it's just finding the metadata for all the templates we have. So yes. I assume every new template should also come with the UI metadata. Yeah, we, we have to add uh, the, the, if you would make a new templates, we have to add uh, the metadata for the additional information screens. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good. Is that it? Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Jean Thierry. Okay. You have to share your screen. Uh, I did it. Ah, you have to try again. Uh, is it okay? Almost, yes. That's okay. Yep, thank you. So, what? That's an old version because I can see buttons. <laughs> uh, oh, it's a recent version. Nope. Okay. So, <laughs> So I did a, a, a workflow uh, where there is a, here here I get uh, I get uh, the home page and I did it uh, thirty times. It's it's to have an activity that take a certain amount of time. Then I block on this activity. So in the property, I'll make it a singleton, a single instance. So when I start a, a singleton workflow, normally it does its job. And when it stop on an on a activity, if the same event come again, uh, it, 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 it don't create a new instance because it's a singleton. So this is the expected behavior. So here I will uh, yes. So here I will send 10 concurrent request okay and now I refresh so what happened even it is a singleton uh, I could make the demo uh, with only one request and you will see that there is only one instance and uh, do it again and uh, do it again, only one instance because the requests are not, are not concurrent. But if you have uh, 10 concurrent requests, you will have 10 instances. So it's a bug. So uh, because uh, it did that after uh, the first one, uh, didn't have the time to persist his workflow. Uh, the other one say, okay, I can do my job. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, uh, not, not really a bug, but uh, yes, 
<laughs> I don't I don't find the correct word. So I delete them. Now I come again here. And in the property, there is two new uh, parameters for atomicity, a lock timeout and a lock expiration in milliseconds. So I will put 10 seconds for the first example. And after I will show you if you use the lower value for the timeout to have a, a different uh, a different behavior. So I save it. Save the workflow. And now here. So what happened? Only one instance. Okay. And we can see this instance is blocked here. So I delete it. So, so uh, atomicity, uh, lo lo a lock for atomicity is useful for a single instance work workflow. If it's not a single instance, so if there is uh, no, no timeout, uh, it will create uh, 10 instances, that's okay. But we will do it because we will compare the time if there is a atomic locking time. So, yeah, okay. I save. Okay. So, we can see request per second here. And we have 10 instances. Okay. Now I will do the same, but with some locking time. So it's no more a single instance, but we still use locking time. So there will be uh, 10 instances, but uh, each instance was, uh, each uh, process time was, was done uh, each after the other one, like a job queue. So you will see that it will take a little more time because each one work uh, each after each other not uh, in the, uh, at the same time. So that's okay. You can see request person is lower, but you have, oh, we only have nine because one has timeout. Because uh, to create, uh, to, to do uh, 10 times the, the, the total uh, work, with my loop. Uh, so shouldn't there be one in a failed state? The, the last one, uh, timeout. He wait for yeah. it for uh, all other one. And uh, so it can be useful to to make, uh, to not to not be a singleton, uh, a workflow singleton, but we don't want uh, that uh, a given workflow work uh, concurrently. And the job uh, is done uh, one after each other atomically. And, uh, exactly. and I yeah. think that the, the one that timed out should yeah. still be created, but in a failed state. So we can see 10 instances, but one of them is failed. So we know that one failed because it timed out. Otherwise, there is no way to know that it timed out. Uh, yes, but it's not really a, a bug because, uh, yes, I understand, uh, we'll see, uh, because you, it's part of the locking contract uh, as you say to me in a previous discussion, but let me show the, the, the last example. 
I will do the same, but uh, with a low timeout. So it's not a single instance. They will all fail. Yes, but uh, so we can create uh, multiple instance, uh, even if one is still processing, but uh, we have a, like, a, a, a lower timeout to have a, like a debouncer if there is 100 uh, same request, concurrent request at the time, they will be just uh, rejected. Don't, so this parameter could uh, could act as a as a filter. I, I will uh, I will do it. I will do it. So here, yeah, no instance. Uh, maybe one or two may be correct if it has time. Normally, with one hundred milliseconds, we will have uh, only one instance. I think. So what? So, what I so think you see, it's very quick. Is very quick because they, but, they don't wait and I have only one instance. Sorry. Yeah. So, what I think you did is not what you wanted to do. You did two parameters with times, so you let people simulate what they actually want. So, here, the single instance thing is a bug. The fact, yeah, that, you, the fact that you have to define. I separate, uh, I separate this because uh, when you create an instance, uh, we, we, I, I, I just demoed uh, the, the, the creation of a workflow instance when they start. But after, sure. when, they, when they are resuming, uh, when an instance exists, uh, even if it is a single or not, when they are resuming multiple times, we still use this indifferently, uh, so I separate it. What I think is you miss more checkboxes instead of times. Uh, so I will finish what I said, which is that you define times to simulate behavior. And what I think we should have checkboxes to define what behavior you want. And then you in the code, you define whatever is necessary to do that, to do that either a timeout or a lock or whatever. But you can't expect people to understand that timeout and expiration will do what you just demoed. Mm -hmm. Example, when you check single instance, it should be a single instance. You should not have to say lock timeout 100. If you think that a lock timeout of 100 or 1000 is necessary in the code to do what you want, do it in the code. But when I check single instance, it should be a single instance. I don't, I shouldn't have, the system should not have to wait for a, a, a static, state, a stored state, to make the workflow single instance. I think when the workflow... I understand I, uh, and I thought about this, but um, when you click here, you still have to um, to put some value here because uh, it depends on the single instance if, if uh, it's a long work or not. I or don't agree. Yes? I don't agree. You, could, you can just say, Imagine there is no lock timeout and lock expression. I check the single instance. What I want to happen is that if two requests starts to work at yes, the same I, time, the I second am. is blocked, done. Okay. I don't care about timeout or whatever, it's blocked. And if there is a default timeout that the second one should not wait for more than whatever, it's an option, it's a setting, it's a configuration. Maybe that's something you can say, but you can keep like, for instance, lock timeout, okay? but it's an option. It should not drive the single instance behavior. It, it, the single instance behavior should work even if I don't define lock timeout. And if I define lock timeout or lock expiration, sorry, it, it's, in, it's hard to understand which one is which one here. But if I say, no, the second workflow should not wait for more than one, one minute or one second or whatever, then okay, after that time, the lock will be expired and the workflow will be uh, canceled, fine. Uh, so that's the first thing. Then, but, uh, the if you only check single instance uh, in the implementation, uh, which value will you use for like for timeout and expiration? A default? No, a default. You can have a default value of one one second here. It's fine. But don't. What you showed us here is that if you don't set any value, single instance doesn't work. I think it's a, it's it's wrong. 
Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> so I think I think if I want to, so it, I should not have to set a value which is more than whatever the workflow timeout is to have single instance to work. It should, if there is, so if if there is no timeout, it should wait indefinitely. Done. Uh, I don't know how you say so, in English. Here, je pas, je pas osé faire ça. So here, if if you put single instance, you check it. It doesn't work. You showed us it doesn't work. What I say is that it should work by default. I should not have to check and set a value. So um, if we put single instance, log timeout is uh, it's uh, it's uh, supported uh, with the distributed doc. Uh, log timeout with uh, will be infinite or a long time. <laughs> yeah, one ten seconds, one minute, a default, whatever. But I yeah. should not have to see it. But what is your suggestion for the default? One minute. Let's let's use one minute. I don't know. It depends on each workflow. But uh, let's I use one minute. One minute, a little a little less, because back contrast is what the granularity of back contrast task is one minute, and you have the time and you have the time event uh, every minute. Okay. So then put it one second before I don't know or ten seconds, something before the background task. Mm -hmm. Then the second demo was about blocking like it's serial so uh, it's not a single instance but it's serial so you don't want it's not a single instance so you, you don't you want just so it, it's another checkbox what i mean is that it's a, it's not a parallel creation it's serial creation like one after the other so it's a second checkbox or drop down is it a standard one is it a single instance or is it a serial instance which means one at a time it's locked but there is no timeout, it's one at a time. Or maybe there is also a timeout, but it's a timeout for the serial uh, processing and not the single instance processing, which will timeout everything. So the two values here, it's just one. And based on what you want to do, which is standard, single, or serial, then the value will mean different things. And you have another scenario. Uh, you have a workflow, uh, which is a single instance. But single instance uh, mean uh, act, uh, actually single instance mean only one instance uh, is starting at a time. But when one instance is finished, another one can. Yes, I agree. Yes. So. Uh, and serial means only one is processed and only. Uh, serial, uh, isn't it the same thing? Serial and serial. Uh, for me, uh, how I implemented it uh, when, uh, for example, if three instances exist of a given workflow type, uh, they, uh, they can run concurrently, but a given instance with, with its workflow ID uh, can run, uh, can't run concurrently. If, on, on, on the on a given event. Okay. It's atomicity of a given instance. We'll talk about it offline. Uh, yes, I think uh, we have to discuss on it. And I uh, just to say, and I have finished, uh, I use the same um, two parameters. I have other PR uh, to do um, atomic uh, background task. Okay. And uh, by, by uh, tweaking the value, but uh, you will say to me uh, to have a different checkbox, uh, we can have uh, exclusive or uh, atomic or uh, Perfect. like for more. Yeah. And I also do the same with two values, but only by configuration to have a shell activation uh, atomicity because there, there is an issue where someone uh, when it starts uh, multiple instance uh, concurrently, so not not on a fresh setup, but uh, uh, afterwards, uh, if there are if it updates the code and there are some migration step, uh, there are multiple uh, migration steps that run concurrently and that that want to create a, a new colon or uh, and it fail. So. Uh, so uh, with the exact same pattern, I applied it to, to shell activation and to background task. 
Okay, thank you. Um, That's it. <laughs> I think it's just a UI and description yes. issue, but take yes. yes. Awesome. Um, Dean. Okay. Are you going to bed or do you have to do the demo? Or can you do the demo? No, I can do a, can do a demo. Let me know when you see the screen. Um, can. Cool. Thanks, JT. That was interesting to see that. Um, so a couple of demos today. Um, one of these is from Hisham. Um, so it's just a little bit of um, UI tweaking, um, but it's the kind of thing that if we do decide to do it, it probably gets done in a few places. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily quite right yet, but um, the problem is that on some of our pages, there's a lot of scrolling um, to find the save buttons and the, the, the actions buttons. Um, so we've talked a few times, I think, about moving um, the actions button on the content page to a different location. And Hisham's done it on the, the template screen. So historically, you're editing a template, you've got to scroll all the way down to the bottom to find your save button when you're kind of working up here. Um, and what he's done is just move the buttons, which are historically down the bottom here, up to the top here, um, and applied a sticky to keep them there. Um, so I kind of like it. I, I, I don't think the bar works. I don't think the bar needs a color. That just seems irrelevant. That and also the fact that because there is a color, it takes some space on the left of the buttons. If it was transparent or sized yeah. to the list of the buttons, I could still see the line 24, 23, 22. Yeah, I don't know if I'd size it, if I'd done make it transparent. Um, okay. Well, uh, we, but I'm, I'm kind of thinking of, of, I think we're probably inspired by the DevOps um, style of design where they've, they have started to have more of these kind of screen real estate just taken up with kind of navigation breadcrumb type. I'm opening on my side just to see what you mean. Arrangements. In an ideal world, it would be text here and breadcrumb, or not, you know, title here, breadcrumb here, and this section would be the bar that everything hovers on. Yeah. So you would always know where you were and always have your controls. In my opinion, you know. So a, what, what I see here is almost what is on uh, Azure DevOps. The title is hidden when you scroll down by the buttons bar and the difference on DevOps is that you also have stuff on the left of the bar, so it's not empty. Yeah, so it's not empty. Like filters and everything. Yeah, down, and down. we've done some of these already for, I think, um, what were the screens they got done on? Um, the next. Was it the features? Yeah, so we keep the bulk yeah, something like that. Yeah. on the features. No, that's consistent. You could have more things there if you need to. It's just that this screen doesn't have anything to show. Exactly. Um, and personally, if I think if we like an arrangement like this, I think we need to lose the, the bar color, though. That's just not working for me. But um, the same problem kind of happens with flow widgets. Um, you know, well, as soon as you've got two or three on a page, and most of the time you've got, probably got 10, um, you just have no buttons anymore as soon as you come into it. Um, and I'm on a Mac with a big screen. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a bar with a border. It can just be full width and then just a full, full point of separation. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, just, a, just a horizontal rule separation just to show that that's the different section that you would call. But yeah, it, it can be blended with the edit template title. It doesn't have to be a div container. Divisible div. OK, yeah, that's uh, almost there. That's good. That's cool. cool, yeah, so that's almost there. Um, the other demo that I had as well was um, 
something I've been working on with um, dynamic user permissions. Um, so the issue that we had was um, that um, we had a permission for the roles to assign roles to a user, um, which was kind of unused. Um, so the only permission that was actually ever checked when you were assigning any roles to a user was um, whether or not you could manage users. Um, so we have to split that out and, a little bit and um, what I've come up with is um, uh, the idea of dynamic permissions, so delegation of um, which users you can manage. Because um, one of the scenarios, for example, is um, if you have a lot of front-end users, you might have someone in the office that you want to manage those front-end users, um, but you don't want them to be able to assign administrator roles to anybody and you don't want to give them the administrator role. Um, so what we have here I, is... I want to correct your phrasing or just maybe I'm wrong, but you say user delegation. It's more like a whole delegation. Um, well, it actually became kind of user delegation. So I'll show you some of the users on the system and show you what I mean, but maybe the terminology is, is wrong. So at the moment I'm logged in as an administrator, so um, I can manage and I have the, the administrator has the permission to manage users of all roles. Um, but if I log in as myself, um, then I've, this user Dean is in the editors group and I've given the editors group the well, role. Permission to manage any other users in that role. So if I go to users here, instead of seeing all the users, I just see all the users that are in the editor's role and that are authenticated because they can manage authenticated and editors in this particular case. Um, so the way I decided to do it was that um, if you have permission to manage the user in that role, the user must be in only the roles that you have permissions to manage. So if I make a user that's an author and an editor, but I don't have permission so to manage authors, I that's can't. not how I saw that. I thought that what you meant is a user can manage the editor all, which means he can see all the users, but when he edits a user, he can only check and uncheck the editor all. Well, that was what we first talked about, and that was what I first did. Um, but I realized that it just wasn't kind of enough because if I was able to and you can see that you can only see the editor roles here like we just talked about. I see, so it's a second thing. It's okay, now I'm... So, so it's on top of, I, I, I kind of did what we talked about and I realized it just wasn't enough. Um, because in this case, if I was seeing all users, but I could only manage their, some of their roles, I could also delete them. I could also disable their accounts, even though I'm, the, the permission would only be about their roles. Um, so, but then, I so mean, what would be the just, point? You know, I can. I uh, mean, these properties should just be allowed by. I see. If they were allowed by admins, then you have to be admin to be able to disable user from all. So there are two levels, like set roles, and then I see. It's two different things. I it see. is two kind of two different things. things, and then the set roles became a bit irrelevant because really it became about actually managing users. So is it, is it opt-in like you could say that you can only manage roles. So when you edit a user, you can only check and check this role. And then the second permission, a role, which is manage users in the role. 
edit users in this role. So you, you could split it further. Um, it, it's not at the moment, um, but what would you split? Um, because you could have the ability to delete them, enable them. That's what I mean by username. By manage user. There is manage role and manage user. And these two permissions are per role. So, but what would you be, then do with, say, their any custom user properties? What would, would they come under the managing roles permission it's or manage, manage user, user permission? But, but manage role is already assign the assign role. Manage user is manage the properties of a user. And then maybe there are other sub permissions that some modules could add, but that's not that's the general one is edit user, manage user, and then manage roles. And these two are role dependent. That would be more obvious this way. This way you can even say you can edit users in this role. You can't assign or remove this role because this person in this company is responsible to for the group contributors. So he can add and remove people from the group contributors. He can't. You see what I mean? He, and he can add or remove people from the group contributors or he can edit anyone from the group contributors. These are two different things. You can have the two of them, like add, remove, and edit all the properties of this group. But you can also say, I just can add or remove people. And you can also say, I can only edit the people from this group. Um, yeah, so if, if you think there's a use to split it out back into two, then I can I can bring the first bit back in, which was the, the role permissions bit. Okay. I, I um, think that's so great. we would end up with then. So you would have to manage users and roles, um, but we would have to have a signing off. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. Like it, it's actually quite tricky to get it working um, because it's about what you list. Um, so the, the list here, the list here is manage users by role. That's it. That's the same thing as editing the properties. Yeah, so the list here is, is this, but as soon as you put a permission down here for managing the roles for administrator, need, they have to have it. this permission and and the second permission. Because without without this permission, they can't get they can't see these. Like they can't get to this like they, they can't get to the screen. These all the users. Like if we look at all the users here, you see how many are not showing because they're not in roles that are, you, that you're authenticated to. So one, so okay, so if you have only one permission for that is derived per role, then you could have an, another one which is not derived per role, which is called edit users or edit. Yeah, you see what I mean? This yeah. way, whether no, you so can see possible, we can. So that would be easier. like manage roles and manage user in roles. Meaning. You. So when you see manage, how do you. How do you do that? You can see everyone. So you can add people in a role. Because if you want to do that, you need to be able to see everyone. That's why I think it's it's probably just one permission. I'm just not sure that there's anything to be gained from having two. I mean, if I can see the two different permissions, which is manage who is in a row and not in a row, and then edit the properties of the user will, who are in the role. For me, there are two different things. I think maybe the, the conflict here is the user's list that in the end, if you can add and remove people in roles, then you need to be able to see everyone. That probably is it, yeah. Um, 
because you'd have to, you really have to be able to see everyone if you're going to be able to assign somebody which, who's yes, not in that role. Yes and no, because maybe it's a different permission, which is view or list users, and then you can define per role. And it can be list all users or list users in specific roles. And then you decide if someone can add or remove people in the editor uh, role, but you also decide who this person can see, like authenticated, non-authenticated contributors. If you just allow them to see contributors, then they can only add or remove people from the contributor role to the editor role. And then the third permission being, you can also edit the people in the editor role. So the view, the list of users is one permission. Setting the roles is another permission, and editing people is another permission. Yeah, I thought we did number three. <laughs> I speak to this much. <laughs> um, this is, in my view, the best option. So you can do everything without too much complicating any logical steps. But Cool. I don't think you would disagree with that. You just think about three different permissions to manage and three different providers and three different lists here. Um, yeah, I mean, the second permission for managing roles is already there. It just, I just um, stripped it out because it just didn't seem very useful. Um, but we can do a a list users um, permission um, yeah. becomes a little, little trickier to make it. Oh no, we can make it non-breaking. Um, cool, excellent. Do you um, agree with what we're talking about? Or? Well, <laughs> yes and no. It kind of it, it overcomplicates it. I need to understand the scenario. It's just that today, the admin has all the three permissions, and we don't see that. It's, it's not obvious. Oh, well, if you have admin rights, you can create users, you can remove users, you can edit users, you can do everything. So we just need to find the correct set of default permissions then for everyone. And yeah. But then you can create a role that's called community manager. It's great. That you can just manage your community. You can't manage everyone else from the internal company. Yeah, so it is about grouping as well, um, because it's it's a useful a useful thing. Um, so yeah, I think if we split them into list or view view list, um, it'll probably be list rather than view because okay. yeah. view would make no sense here. You know, there's it's no, just edit. Yeah, it, that's just edit. Um, yeah. We have a profile also, but that might, that might be a public profile at some point, so maybe view will make sense on the front end if the profile module you know, has the, we talked about it, I think we have an issue, to be able to list a profile with a custom page on the front end. That might be a permission. I yeah. can view myself, yeah. I can view other people. That might be a permission. I can view people in specific roles. Oh, great. This way you can expose the profiles of contributors, but not of admins or whatever. Yeah, and and delegate authority to people to manage groups or roles or yeah, yes, whatever. So flexible. Cool. And I like the icon. If you go back on the list of users, and not on your right screen. Go back on the list of users. The disabled icon. I like it because there is an icon and there is a text. The icon meaningful and text, I know what it means. This is the kind of tag I like. Excellent. Um, Just a note. So we ended up going back to, um, if we talk about admin UI, we ended up going back to buttons rather than icons. Okay. Um, and nice. Yeah, it's getting there. Um, and actions also is now a drop down. Okay. And actions is a drop down. Um, so we've got some of the nice stuff with the the hovers for and the auto filtering. 
cool. Um, so now there is the new on the top right. Should we keep the new on the top left? I already put it on the left. Oh, should we keep this? I, mean, I will remove it. Yeah. I, I hate this. Nobody, nobody likes it. No. And, <laughs> and we can I always make. I have to remove that for my customers because yes. I can't have them going and creating new things <laughs> randomly. So, and also you can add it if you want dynamically. You can create a custom entry that has sub items that points to the new page, right? If you want. Yeah, and I would much rather because those are the things that I want them to make new. Okay, less things I like when we move things. <laughs> I, I like this view on the top right. The new button is very nice, super sleek. I like it. There are icons on the 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 things here, and I and there is, there is a text, so I see what I what I do. Um, okay, actions. I kind of like the three dots somehow, but I assume we couldn't find some solution. Yeah, it just it didn't work because you then got other Shut buttons down. here which have got this this one. So okay. do you have three dots and then you have carrots, or do you have three dots everywhere? But maybe they don't always work. I don't. Oh yeah, I don't know. It's a tricky one. Okay. It's good. But it is good. Yep. Hey, no, it's good. Can you resize the screen? With the top right, so does it include the work that just did on the top right header? Um, did you change it? I'm not sure which one that one was. Yeah, it was March. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you what? will need to enable though. Um, uh, just go in the settings to en enable the title in the oh, top, top nav bar so that you can see it. Ah, uh, it was that one, was it? Yeah. yeah. Too many profiles. Okay. And, and then can you go on the page from Isham's changes with the sticky thing on the shortcut editor or the editor I template it on? I took this there. Oh, we still have oh. this text box that should take the full screen. Long screen, long screen. Other, other tenant. I love when you say I have a tenant. It's so powerful. Oh, where, so but you don't have the option enabled here. So the title should be at the top. Ah. I, I wanted to see the sticky with the title at the top to see how it looks like. That's why. Yes, that's super nice, super sleek. So this sticky is big, too big compared to the one in the templates editor, in the one you were just before. If you go back, yeah, it's the padding. Uh, I made yeah, a comment too much on padding. the PR. Yeah. Okay. Because if you do Alt Left Arrow, oh, you mean go back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the back. <laughs> so you see this one? <laughs> I think this one. Padded, yeah. Oh no, that's the same padding. So what's different? Looks neater. Oh, because there is something on the left. There is a text box. Okay. Well, it looks nice. I, it's just it's stuff. Okay, okay. Super nice. Can you hover the icons on the top right just to see if there is a tooltip? There's no tooltip. Or maybe it's because you are touch mode. Oh, and yeah, it's, uh, yeah, because he's in yeah, mobile. And mobile now. I see. Taught it there. Taught it there. What does this one do? It goes back to the other one. Yeah. Dashboard. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. It's perfect. Like it. Cool. Okay. Um, Antoine. Yeah. Multi field. Do we still have that? Up to you. Mm -hmm. It should be quick. Yeah, that's what John Terry said, and it took half an hour. <laughs> Gene took half an hour also. The only one who made a quick demo was Magnus. Yeah. And 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 I asked him some questions. So. <laughs> okay, so the demo is about the multi-text field. So you is it new? Uh, yes. Okay, yes. I don't use Ultra. 
It's not yet available. It's in a, new, in a, in a PR. Oh, we talked about it. OK, there is always an issue, right? Um, what kind of, of issue? Well, designing the thing like what we need, no? No, mm, okay. No, not really. Uh, so when you add a multi-text field, uh, as in the text field with the predefined list editor, you can specify uh, options in your list with a, a label, a value, a default value. Uh, so in the predefined list, it's already a button because you can only check one, uh, one option. Um, you can add a new one. You can select an editor. Let's see the standard one. If I refresh, you see the second option is selected. And there are uh, three options. And this is a list box with multiple select. If you use control click, uh, that's the standard editor. You can also select a list of checkboxes and you will have uh, vertical uh, checkboxes. And the last one, uh, Dean made, is uh, like the tabs editor. It's a, uh, a picker, a picker using the view multi-select uh, component, so you will be able to add um, uh, the the options available. Can Can you go back on the list of fields? I want to understand what we had before to do that. Mm -hmm. So, text text field list. What is that? Text field. This one. No text field list. Predefined list. Uh, text field list. Okay. So let me save. It's the predefined list. The text yeah. field with the predefined list editor. So as I oh, said, that different. Yeah. Um, you can oh, it's it. one value. I see. Mm -hmm. It's one value, but with the same kind of editor, same kind of options and settings. Okay. But it's one value. Yeah. It's a radio, and the one is a checklist. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. we, can, we could even have the picker, right, view for this. Different. But that's a, that's a different discussion. Yeah. Okay. Looks good. Mm -hmm. I mean, am I missing anything? I mean, why why you? So to do that before we use tags slash taxonomies, but this one is just text value. So it's a simple one. It's not managed vocabulary. It's like okay, yeah, three options text. done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looks good. I'm, I'm surprised we didn't have that before. Uh, no, and uh, Dean helped me to finish it, uh, uh, adding the indexing and the GraphQL. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay, good job, Dan. Thank you. Beautiful. And do you have a locking timeout for the multi-text field or not? <laughs> Jasmine, I see Jasmine's hand. Atom atomic field. Yeah. Oh, it's funny because I, I tried to see if you, you were seeing that I was raising my hand. Um, I, I just, just want. Yeah, I had just one comment because I saw that he used the view component and the default values. You could just add one. And maybe if it's a multiple value, you could be able to have multiple yes. default values. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
Yeah. The default value should be a checkbox or something. I, I think that actually does work, um, Jasmine, because I tried that today. Okay. So you can select awesome. two, de two default values. Um, whether the default is the right name for it in that case. Yeah, and that probably works. Trying to take care of that. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks, everyone. Uh, second time in a row that we take more than one hour and 30 minutes, one hour and 40 minutes. Um, lots of discussions. Um, no meeting on Thursday, but next one on next Tuesday, the new year. Thank you, everyone. See you next week.